Who is it? King Johnny. King Johnny. How do you like me in these robes? Magnificent, ain't I? Where's Barnabas? Here. You thought I tricked you when I ran off. Tell the truth. That's what you thought. I was afraid you had. You have no reason to be afraid. I said I'd cure this Quentin of yours, and I am going to do so. Have him here by dawn. I will have him here, but I won't be here myself. Now, I want to know where he is. Tell me now. There is an abandoned mill at the end of the North Road. You think you can find it by yourself? I can find it. I'll take care of things as soon as I take care of Count Petoffi. that for? The golden scimitar of the Romana tribe. A hundred years ago, it severed Count Petofi's hand from his wrist. It has always been sacred to the gypsies. Tonight, it'll be more sacred. So that's when you're going to get it back. Oh, it's going to do more than that, Mr. Barnabas. It's going to do much more than that with King Johnny behind it. What do you mean? You want to know too many gypsy secrets. You just leave it all to King Johnny. Suppose, suppose he don't find Petofi. Why wouldn't he? I don't know. He's too smart to just sit and, and, and wait for the gypsies to, to find him. Suppose he is gone. Expected, Petofi? You was expecting me, wasn't you? Every time you killed a gypsy, you was expecting me. I had no idea what you would be like. No, you didn't. So every gypsy filled you with terror. Anyone could have been me. The humblest, the greatest, the most magnificent. There was no way of telling, was there? Was there? But I ain't a disappointment, am I? I am worthy of you. Put that down, Pentoffi. That won't do you no good, and you know it. I was so close to escaping from you forever. That's over and done with. There is no escape for you now. To all the other gypsies, he was a legend. To me, you was a legend, too. Until my grandfather, Matteo, died. Nine days after he died, I had a dream. He came to me in that dream just like his uncle Zarko came to him. He told me, like his uncle Zarko told him, that I was now the keeper of the hand. He told me that I was the only gypsy in the world that Count Petofi had no power over. And you do fear me, don't you? Yes. 
Yes, I fear you. You tell me why. Because you are the one gypsy in the world I have no power over. The one gypsy who has power over you. Listen to me, Johnny Romano. Let me talk for five minutes. My name is King Johnny. You call me that. Oh, I won't call you that. You're no real king. A king doesn't wear tawdry robes. He, he doesn't have bits of glass, tinsel ornaments, bright handkerchiefs. A real king has rubies, diamonds, real rubies and diamonds. He has furs, beautiful women to wrap them around. He has palaces full of treasure. So much you can't count it all. I could make all that real for you, Johnny Romano. All that and more. This could give it to you. I know the true powers of this hand. You gypsies don't. Can't gain from it as I can. You think King Johnny is some kind of fool? You think I'd leave this room with my pockets stuffed with diamonds and leave that hand and you roaming the same earth as us gypsies? You think I would give up that hand for all the treasures in the world? But I won't be roaming the same earth with you, Johnny Romano. What's that supposed to mean? I have a friend with exceptional powers. He's going to take me to the future, to a time almost 75 years from now. With that much distance between us, Johnny Romano, we'll never meet again. They'll never find me there. It'll all be over between Patofi and the gypsies when Barnabas Collins takes me to the floor. <laughs> Barnabas Collins! What's the matter? Barnabas Collins ain't your friend. Barnabas Collins ain't taking you to the future. He told me where I could find you. Where I could find the hand. What are you going to do? You know what I am going to do. What was done to you 100 years ago? Take my hand. Is there no hope? No mercy? The same mercy that you showed the slaughtered gypsies in the forests of Osdon. The same mercy that you showed any gypsy unfortunate enough to cross your path. That's the mercy I will show you! And there's nothing more to be said. There's only this. The firelight. How the knife gleamed as it came close to my hand. The agony as it was severed from my wrist. It was a hundred years ago and I still remember. I don't want to remember. This time you won't have to remember for long. I'm going to cut off your hand, Count Petofi. It'll happen like it did a hundred years ago. But there's going to be one thing that's going to be different. What? One thing. After I've taken the hand, I'm going to take your life and there's nothing you can do that can stop me. Nothing! Arrival. I owe my life to you. I shall not forget that. Now, unstrap me, Alistair. This position is singularly unpleasant. How did this gypsy happen to find you? Barnabas Collins betrayed me. Barnabas Collins? Wherever I turn, Barnabas Collins has contrived to make matters uncomfortable for me. We must deal with Mr. Collins just as soon as we've dealt with this gypsy. Well, I think I dealt with him rather well. 
considering how far he was from the door. Yes, you did very well indeed. I will remember it at the proper time. Now we must take care of this savage. Well, this one doesn't have long to go. Did you hear that, Johnny Romano? I promised you things beyond your expectations, beyond your dreams, and I haven't disappointed you, have I? You never dreamt you would die tonight, but you are dying, King Johnny, and I will kill all of your tribe that cross thy path. They must learn to leave me alone. They must learn to give me peace. No, no peace for you, none. You are dead. You killed King Johnny. You think you are safe. Think again. Nine days after my spirit leaves the earth. Nine days I will return and give the power to another gypsy somewhere. He will then have the power to kill you. He, whoever he is, wherever he is, you will not know. Until then, the golden scimitar will be raised against you again. I've heard enough, Excellency. Let me kill him right and now. And you, you've done enough to King Johnny. His spirit will not forget. His spirit curses you. Save your weapons for the living Aristide. Dog is dead. I don't like the idea of his cursing me. You have killed one gypsy. I have killed hundreds in my time. In spite of all their curses, I have dined well, slept well, and dreamt no desperate dreams. What do we do now, Excellency? Dispose of our visitor, obviously. Well, if he doesn't return to his camp, what if one of the others comes looking for him? He boasted to me that he was the only one who knew where I was and who I am. I'd like to leave him in an open field like an animal. Where it would be safe. Get a shovel. We'll bury him immediately. They'll never know what happened. Perhaps not. If we dig well enough and deep enough, but in nine days, one gypsy somewhere will know that now the power over Batofi has been passed on to him. Just a while. I'd like that very much. David. What do you want to talk about? Tell me how we met in 1969. I don't understand, Quentin. You know how we met. But I just want to see if you remember. Come on. Well, there was the telephone in the West Wing. What about the telephone? Well, you used to tell Amy and me what you wanted on that telephone. Oh, well, yes, I did, didn't I? But then you wouldn't have recognized me. So you saw me. You saw me in 1969, didn't you? Sure I did. When we went into the sealed room and found the skeleton. Where did you find the skeleton? On a chair near a big roll-top desk. In the sealed room. That's my room. In the 
the skeleton is my skeleton. I'm so tired. Please let me sleep. Not yet, David. Please, not yet. Please. Anything that you say, Quentin. All right, now. Even though you found the skeleton, you saw me. Of course. What did I look like? I don't understand what you're asking me. You looked like Quentin. How else would you look? I don't know. How does a ghost look? That's why they're all afraid of you. They said that you were evil. Am I evil? Beth loves you. Beth? What is she doing there? Please, Quentin. I don't want to talk anymore. You know I'll do whatever you want, but please let me sleep. And I'm so frightened to know that in 1969, Quentin Collins will be a skeleton in a sealed up room, a ghost terrorizing a small boy, driving people from Collinwood. Why? Why does this lie in store for me? How does it happen? And what does it mean? Quentin? Angelique? I've been looking for you. How's the boy? He's very sick. Cassandra! Hello, David. I didn't know you were coming back. And I didn't know that you had been in college. In David Collins's time. Another time? Another name? Yes. Yes, I was there. Or should I say I will be there. Before you arrive, however. And arrive I do, apparently. And I'm terrified to think how or why or as what. There's got to be a way to end this. There must be a way to save us now and in the future, too. Perhaps there is a way. How? Oh, tell me. Never mind. But I'll try to remove the spell from Jameson. And from Edward, too. If you'll marry me, Quentin. You offered to help me once before, if I would marry you. I know, and I failed. Then the marriage was off. But this time you must promise me you'll marry me no matter what happens. What do you mean? The spells on Jameson and Quentin and Edward are very powerful. I have strong powers, too. But I don't know if they're strong enough. Who are you? I'm not who I thought I was. I'm, I'm someone else. Someone far away. Yes. Yes, you're someone else. Far away. You must let that someone re-enter your body. You must say your rightful name, claim your true identity, be as you were born. Now, tell me now, I command you to tell me who you are. Uh, I am... I am... I am... Go on, tell no! me who you are. No! Just tell me, tell me, you must. you have him. Master of darkness, I entreat thee to look with favor upon me. 
hear my plea. I beg you in this most crucial struggle, respond to me. Help me restore the identity of this child in order that Quentin Collins shall be mine and yours. I'm sure he told you all about me before he sent you up here to taunt me. Uh, who are you talking about? The scoundrel who locked me in this room, that's who I'm talking about. I was prepared to perform my duties as I always have done. But he didn't even give me an opportunity. And I'll never know why. Oh, you poor man. What an awful thing for someone to do. Oh, please. If he sent you here just to give me false hope. I didn't. I had no idea there was anyone up here. You must believe that. I I'd like to help you. Oh, this is too good to be true. Do you really think it's possible to get me out of here? <laughs> it is if I can find the key to this room. The master of the house has the key. Oh, then you just sit tight, love, and I'll run and fetch them. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. Well... If you look anything like you sound, love, we'll think of a way. Angelique, you know who I am? Of course I do. How long have I been asleep? It's not important. Jameson, you're yourself again. What are you talking about? Listen to me. What's the last thing you remember before you fell asleep? Well, uh, I think I, I remember coming down the stairs in the foyer. I was saying goodbye to that man. That man? Yes. It's funny, his name seems to have slipped my mind right now. Victor Fenn Gibbons? Yes. He certainly is a strange old man. Yes. Very strange indeed. But tell me, don't you remember anything else? Well, I know that I must have had a dream. Why do you think that? Because because things keep coming into my head. Images. What kind of images? Well, there's this, there's this old box, and it's carved, and this little black notebook, and this hand that, that's cut off, and it has a red ring on it. I don't understand any of it. It's all right. Jameson, it's far better that you don't understand. Open this door. I demand to be let out of this room. I'm in a bit of trouble, love, but I finally got him. Open this door, do you hear? All right, all right, love. I've got to find the right key, don't I? Who the devil are you, anyway? Say, what's got into you, anyway? 
very well. You don't even sound like the same gentleman I'm Open gentleman. this door and be quick about it. Well, you certainly got where the eyes are to you, haven't you? Charity, what does this mean? What does what mean? You asked me to get you out of here, didn't you? I demand to know why I've been locked in this room. And what has happened to you? Look at the way you're dressed and your change in your voice. Here now, you're the one what's changed. You seemed rather pleasant when I was up here before. <laughs> Ooh, but you got a bit stuffy now. I believe you've gone mad. Well, one of us has love. That's for certain. Angelique. It's all right. Jameson, he's very much himself again. Thank God. Jameson, we were very worried about you, boy. What's the matter? Why are you trying to kill David Collins? Jameson. Why did you ask me that question? I don't know. It just came into my head, so, so I asked you. Do you know who David Collins is? He, he's someone that... Well, go on, Jameson. Someone that, that you're trying to kill. But you don't know who he is or what he looks like? No. And I don't understand why you'd want to kill anyone, Uncle Quentin. I don't, Jameson. You've been through a terrible experience. You've had a long nightmare, but it's all over now. You know something? We're going to take very good care of you. 